can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. of Psalms chapter 90 have you seen it okay look at verse 1 the song is in verses 1 and 2 Lord thou has been our dwelling place in generations God now actually you have in all generations but then in the songs in generations gone all right then you go verse 2 before the mountains were brought forth 
or ever thou hast fallen the earth, you skip on the world, even from everlasting to everlasting. Thou. <laughs> All right, you got it, right? Before the mountains were brought forth, however thou hast fallen the earth. thank you. We adore you. Thou art God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated. 
Hallelujah. Would you turn to the book of Ephesians in chapter number 3? Ephesians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Again, I'd like to read that from the Amplified Version. Some of you have the Amplified to me, though I am the very least of all the saints, God's consecrated people, this grace, favor, privilege, was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, you know, in the King James Version that we just read, he said, the unsearchable riches of Christ. And that's actually the word I want to break down for you. It says, to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, boundless, fathomless, incalculable, and exhaustless riches of Christ. Wealth which no human being could have searched out. Back in the King James, verse 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I read that ninth verse into the tenth verse from the New English Translation. It says, I'm to enlighten everyone about God's secret plan. A secret that has been hidden for ages in God who's, who created all things. The purpose of this enlightenment is that through the church, the multifaceted wisdom of God should now be disclosed to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly realms. Praise God. That means angelic powers. God wants to make his many-sided wisdom known to angelic forces through the church. Through you and me. He wants to educate angels through us. Now think about it. We don't even think we know anything. And God wants to give us the revelation of eternal verities so we can manifest them to the world and in the process have angelic beings educated by us about the multifaceted wisdom of God. That's remarkable. No wonder Peter said, we who were not a people have become the people of God. He says, we were not a people. We were nobodies. But now we have become the people of God. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, Christianity is not a religion. It is a living thing. That's true. 
You know, a lot of people think Christianity is a religion, but that's because they don't understand it. They don't know what it is. See, it is God alive in a human being. That's what Christianity really is. God at work. It's divinity revealed in humanity. That's Christianity. That's what it is. It's not a religion. To the world, it's one of the religions. Some even say it's the best religion in the world. But it's not a religion. Can you say kerosene is the best drinking water? Can you say that? Can you say that? Because it's not. It's not drinking water. Hallelujah. To preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Unfathomable. It's past finding out. Oh, why is he saying all this? What does this mean? Christ saved us. To bring us to his place. In, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, can we, can we look at it? Ephesians chapter 2. I want to read from verse 4. Have you seen it? But God, who was rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins. Did you see that? That's a big thing. He says, his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in sins. He loved us even when we were in sins. But that's not all. Hath quickened us together with Christ. The word quicken means to make alive. So he has made alive us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together. Notice, this is not a promise. He says, he hath quickened us. He hath raised us up. That means he's done it, because it's past tense. Well, you know, when you study your Bible, it's important for you to notice what's past, what's present, and what's future. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what is already done that you can enjoy now. Hallelujah. And had raised us up together. Oh, that means I'm raised up. So he raised us up together when he raised Christ from the dead. That's what he's saying. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So in the heavenly realms, I am sitting together with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That in the ages to come, oh boy, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Oh my goodness. Do you know what he's saying? He says he's done all of this, raised us together with him, made us sit together with him, so that in the ages to come, how long is an age? An age is lots of years. It's a long time. For example, this period that we're in is called a church age. And started after the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's almost 2,000 years now. It's a church age. It actually means a period of time. In which God deals with his people in a certain dispensation. How, how long is that time the pains in God? Or you can have an idea. But the interesting thing is, he didn't say on this occasion, what we just read, that in the next age, he might show his exceeding riches. He says, in the ages to come, 
So we're going to go to another age and to another age. We're going to see different ages. Several ages have come and gone. We are just a part of one now. And we're going to go into other ages, from one age to another, and see the marvelous expressions of God's character. How wonderful he is. Hallelujah. So, I said, well, why is he doing all of this? Because he wants to manifest himself. He wants to show. You see, the, the human being is the highest of God's creatures. What makes him the highest of God's creatures? I want to tell you. It's not because of his reasoning power. All right? No, that's not it. He's the highest of God's creatures because he is the one in whom God can fully express his potentialities. That's why Jesus came as a man. Because in man, God can fully express his potentialities. Hallelujah. So, why were you born then? Why did God create you? Why did you ever come? You want to know your purpose? The reason you came is because God chose to express himself in his fullness in you. Without, without supplanting your peculiarities. Now that's very important. He doesn't supplant your peculiarities. In other words, the things that are peculiar to your identity are preserved. You are still you. But God expresses all of his potentialities in that person called you. So you find that how could we ever completely fathom God's characteristics? How could we ever completely claim to know everything about him when in each one of us how so different we are yet he expresses himself in his fullness in our peculiar characters isn't that amazing he can do certain things through me in the way he will never do them through you and he can do those things through you in a way he'll never do them through me. And in a way he'll never do them through someone else that's close to you. Marvelous. That's why you see the over five billion people on the face of the earth today. And there are no two fingerprints alike in the whole world. No two people are exactly alike. And then God expresses himself in us. That's why he made us. Because God's so wonderful. He's so, he's so awesome. And one person is not enough for him to fully express himself. He needs all of us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And after he's expressed himself in all of us, he's still got so much more to show. And we are and not enough to express he still needs more hallelujah so I was created for God to express himself I'm unique so I am the question is are you available to God how God wants to show himself in your life how God wants to manifest his beauty his holiness his grace his glory in your life his excellencies didn't you see that's what Peter said he says ye are a peculiar people come on let's see it here first Peter chapter 2 and then I'll read to you from the Amplified so you can catch the picture
We sing the song all the time, the King James version of it. Your chosen generation. You remember it? Okay, chapter 2, 1 Peter chapter 2 from verse 9. Can you read it to me from the King James version? Most of you are children of King James, so go ahead and read it to me. Want to go. Ye are. Did he say you shall be? Ye are. Okay, come on. Hold on. You know when you read things like this, uh -uh. Jesus said, search the scriptures. Paul said, study. You know, we need to study the word. You know, when you read it like this, it looks like, hey, come on. Uh, let me read it the way you read it. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar, peculiar, peculiar people. Then it says, that ye should That means with all of this glory that God has done in your life, what does he want? He says that you should show forth the praises of him. The word praises has been wrongly rendered. That's why I want to read it to you from the Amplified. It's been wrongly rendered. It's not praises like you would think we're doing like this. It's much more than that. It says the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, awe inspiring light. He called you out of poverty, out of sickness, out of darkness, out of penury. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Out of sin. He called you out of all that life of darkness into his, not just light, but his marvelous light. Like David said, thou hast made me a wonder. <laughs> Hallelujah. You become a wonder. And they can't understand you, huh? They look at you like, wow. Yeah. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let me read to you from the Amplified Version. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased special people. Then it says that ye may, ye may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues. <laughs> display the virtues and perfections of him. Set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of him who had called you. That's what I wanted you to see. What your real calling is. You were called to set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and perfections of God in your life. That's the reason you were born. It hasn't dawned on your spirit yet. I wanted to get right inside you. Do you know why you were born? Doesn't matter that your parents sat down with you one day and said, Son, actually, how you came, you are not our plan. <laughs> we wanted to stop in number three, and you came as number four. <laughs> so in other words, you're a mystic. When I was told that your mother was pregnant, I was very sad. If not God, we would have put you in the dustbin. No matter how you came, brother, you are here now. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You know, uh, why this is so important? I met a, a, a woman, she was 52 at the time I was ministering to her. 52 years old. So she came up to me and she was crying. She's 52. She was crying. And I said, what's the matter? She said, I've been a very sad person. I've lived all my life, all my life sad. I said, why? And she broke down, crying, crying. I said, tell me, why? How old are you? 52. I said, so what's the problem? She's married. 
She's got children. Oh, 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 what's the matter with you? She said, I was told that I was a mystic. I was not supposed to have been born. And when I was born, my mother wanted to abort me. I said, but you survived, didn't you? But it made us sad. 52 long years. Now I want you to know what people go through. Look, for you, you may be thinking, hey, it doesn't matter. I don't know, man, I'm here. No, 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 no. Not like that. You need the word of faith to give you confidence. All right? I, I met a guy almost 30 years old. All right? He had gone to school. Everything was all right. Until one day, the father said, I got something to tell you. So come home quick. And he came. And he sat down and daddy sat down and daddy said um i never wanted to tell you all these years but it's time to tell you i'm not your real father And uh, your mother said, your mother said, and you know the story. Your mother said, your mother said, and the mother said, 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 and the mother really, really said. And so found out there's another man who's been asking his mother, where is my son? And then they decided to take him to his father. And when he met his father, carbon copy. It's always like that. Carbon copy. But he wept and wept. Almost 30 years. So it hurt. So I'm not saying that some things like that may not hurt. So if you're not in that situation, you may not know what it feels like. So there are people who have found themselves in that situation and Satan used that opportunity to destroy their happiness, their effectiveness. But the point is, you're here now. All right? You're here now. Doesn't matter how you came, it doesn't matter now. From where you are, you can take the word of God and become. A success because that's God's plan hallelujah so stand for yourself now it's time to discover yourself your spirit your spirit being you're not a physical body you know when people say I am I am I am uh, an noble man I say, where inside your body is Rubu? <laughs> no, if we dissect you, which, where, what, what is that thing in your body that is Rubu? <laughs> I mean, Yoruba man, where is it? Which part of you? Is it all, all of me? No! Somebody said, I'm son of the soil. Which one? <laughs> Until your mentality comes out, out of that, out of the world, you don't know Christ. When you come to Christ, you cease to be of this world. You stop thinking like an Arab man. You stop thinking like an Igbo man. You stop thinking like a Hausa man. You stop thinking like a Nigerian. You stop thinking like an American. You become a Christian. <laughs> Christian, Christ in you person. Because Christ is a place. Don't forget it. Christ is a place. He is a person, but he is a place.
Christ is a place. You have arrived. You have come now. The place is called Zion. He says, we are come. since ye are come. In other words, ye have arrived. Where? The city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. That's Christ. That's his place. Didn't you read it just now? He says, he quickened us together with Christ. All right? Raised us up together and made us sit together. Where? In the heavenly realms. That's where he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, he says, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Where is that place? Somebody says, it's heaven. It's not heaven. He didn't go to prepare heaven for us. Heaven was always prepared. Come on, understand this stuff. He wasn't talking about heaven. I've tried through the years to let Christians understand that. You know, a lot of them think that when somebody gives his life to Christ, because a lot of the evangelists of many years ago, and some of them still say that, they, they, they thought that um, when, you, when you're born again, God starts building your mansion. They say, mansions are being built in heaven right now. Bulldozers are walking in heaven right now. No. There are no mansions being built. The Bible says all the works were finished from the foundation of the world. All the works in heaven and in earth, they were finished. He's not doing anything. He's not working. He's not building. The angels are not building structures. Heaven is a beautiful place. It's already there. Nobody's mansion is being constructed. God, listen, he says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Everlasting in the past, deathless past. Everlasting in the future, deathless future. Do you understand? He's God. Do you think that God, let me give you a mystery. You know, Paul said, I'll show you a mystery. He said, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Let me show you also a mystery. Oh, yeah. When we get to heaven, we are not going to find us and say, Hey, are you here too? <laughs> are you here? <laughs> We're not going to be like, I don't know whether I'm the Uncle is here. Uncle Sonny, I don't know whether he's here. Uncle Sonny, I'm looking for Uncle Sonny, I don't know what I see. No! We're not going to be surprised to see ourselves. No, we're we going to be surprised that somebody was not there. When we get there, when we all get there, we're going to find that we were always one. There'll be no introductions. Didn't you read in the Bible when Jesus appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration? With Moses and Elijah. Did he introduce them? Did Jesus introduce them to Peter, James and John? No! Peter spoke up! He knew who they were! He said, Master, let us stay here. And let us build three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. Who told him? Because in the realm of the spirit, there's a oneness. Are you hearing this? So we are in this world and the Bible says he has given us the gospel. That gospel is God's method for us to locate those that he has chosen. That's what the Bible says. We were chosen in Christ before the world began. Before the world began. Did you catch it? You know, when I read these things in the Word, I am excited. I am not an accident to God. I didn't suddenly make a choice. That choice that I made, I found out that God predestinated me to make that choice. Shout amen, somebody! Oh, hallelujah! Glory to God! I was born for what I'm doing. I found out. I found out. It wasn't just my desire. I was born for it. Are you hearing me? The best thing for a man in life is to find out why he was born. And step into God's destiny for his life. How do you find out? By the Holy Ghost. By the Word of God. 
That's the way you find out. That's how you're born again. The Word and the Spirit. Then through the Word, the Spirit directs you, leads you into the destiny that God prearranged for you. Let me... Can I? Mm, 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 mm. Hi. Hi. You still there? Yes. Okay. Look at the book of Ephesians chapter number two. When you leave here today, say, ah, ah, that Ephesians, I like Ephesians. You will go and you will ransack Ephesians for yourself. Hallelujah. Then from there you go to the other books and you keep seeing wonders. Wonders. <laughs> Let me first read it to you from the King James. Verse 10, chapter 2. Do you love God's word? Yes. Say this with me. I'm a success. I'm a success. Say I was born to be. I was born to be. Did you hear that? You were born to be. You were born to reveal his glory. That's why you were born. You're not an accident. You were born for a reason. That's why I told you, always learn to synchronize yourself. All right? By the Holy Ghost synchronize yourself so you could be in god's place in god's time for god's purpose in god's way all the time so you can function in the perfect will of god you'll be in sync with god so you're working on his timetable some people are out of sync they are off god's will for them is like this they are going like this I'll show you something in a moment. What God says about you and God's will. Hello? Verse 10, chapter 2, book of Ephesians. For we are, we are, not we shall be. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Ah, yeah. Created unto good works. Are you hearing me? I was not made to steal. I was not made to be a robber. I, don't you understand what I'm talking about? You that are stealing, somebody with you are stealing. That's not the reason you were born. Don't you understand? You say, how do I know? I know. How? Because everyone who can hear this message is expected by destiny to respond to it. If you were not supposed to change, you were not supposed to hear this message. This is God's material. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. God is not a bad investor. He's a good investor. This is God's material for changing your life. The Bible says the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. But how can they believe except they hear it? How can they hear it without a preacher? So he sent me to preach it so you can hear it, so you can believe and receive it. His material is the gospel. That's what you're hearing. And he's not using it in vain. The message is coming to you now to transform your life. All God wants you to say is, yes, sir, I accept. That's all. And he will do the rest. Just get ready. By the time we're rounding off this service, your life will not be the same again. Hallelujah. You were born to hear this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's it. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That means we're created for good works, to do good works. Which God, these good works, he says, which God hath before ordained that we should work in them. Just in case you didn't catch it. Let me read it to you from the, from the newer version here. He says, for we are God's own handiwork. Ah. You know, when you look at something like this, it says, whose handiwork is this? Whose workmanship is this? They say it's XYZ company. 
Now, the Bible says we are God's handiwork. We are His workmanship. Hmm. It says, recreated in Christ Jesus. That means born again. So it says, recreated in Christ Jesus. It puts in parentheses, born anew. Hallelujah. That we may do those good works which God predestined. That means planned beforehand for us. This is the best part of it. Listen, he says, taking parts which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them. Then he says, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. I am. I! You see what I mean? He says, doing the good works that God prepared. He prepared the good works ahead of time. Taking parts, that means the road he planned for me to pass. He says, God already arranged it so that I will go through that road. In other words, everybody that I will meet, God already wrote it down. Everything they will tell me, everything I would say. So if I will sink myself, through the word of God and the Holy Ghost in God's place, in God's time for God's purpose then my life would be on course he says living the good life which he prearranged he prearranged the good life and made it ready for us to live hi what a life what a life, what a life what a life that's why Paul could tell when his job was not completed. He said, I, I feel like dying. It's better for me to die and go to heaven. I'll read it to you just now. So you understand that in Christianity, there's no such thing as, Paul, oh, hey, say, hey. I didn't know, I just died. <laughs> in real Christianity, <laughs> in real Christianity, we have a choice. We have a choice so much so I will show it to you so much so that if God showed up in your room and said son we are dying today you could say is today all right and God will say that's what I thought and you will say okay not today you say that is that possible I will read to you just now. Listen. Listen. Let me give you, let me give you a testimony from a dear man of God. Very remarkable testimony. His wife had a goiter. And the goiter was growing larger and larger. And then he was about 35 years old. All right? He was about 35 years old. Kenneth e. Hagen. And um, as it got larger, she began to have choking spells. And they had been praying about it. But somehow, he, he had this fear about letting her go for an operation because the doctors had checked and said uh, she would have to have surgery so she was very concerned and he was concerned so he kept praying about it they were praying about it one day Jesus appeared to him in a vision And the Lord said, tell your wife to go for the operation. She will not die. Why did he, why did he say that? Actually, he, he started by telling him, I've come to answer your prayer. He said, tell your wife to go for the operation. She will not die. He said, because it was divinely ordained that she would die on the operation table. 
Uh huh. She was supposed to die on the operation table. He said, every time I prayed about it, I had this feeling within me that if I let her go for the operation, she would die. Then Jesus said, yes. That was divinely ordained that she would die on the operation table. Now, the woman said this on her own as well, afterward. She said, I always thought that I would die on the operation table. She knew it inside her. The husband knew it inside him. The doctors didn't give her a chance to make it through. They felt she would die. Now, Jesus, Jesus said to him that that was divinely planned. Then he said, but because you asked me, she will live and not die. Then he said this, how I wish to do so much for my children if they would only ask me. Do you understand that? In other words, he has given us a right to alter divine plans. <laughs> Didn't you hear what he called in the book of Hebrews chapter 12? He said, we are come to Mount Zion. He called it the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are registered in heaven. I don't know whether you got that or not. You think about the house of representatives? All right. Think of the, the, the National Assembly when they all come together and they make decisions for the country. The Bible says we have arrived there. We belong in the General Assembly and Church of the Firstborn. He says which are registered. They are registered. You are registered in the General Assembly of God to govern the world. Ne do you understand for anything that concerns you to be done your consent is required that is the policy your consent is required if you don't know this you think God is responsible for everything that happens let me read to you from what Paul said here, book of Philippians. I want you to notice his words. Philippians chapter number one. I'm going to start reading to you from verse 21. Listen carefully. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. In other words, he says, to live in this world is Christ. Christ manifested in me. He says, to die is gain. In other words, whether I live or die, I win. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that a beautiful life? Then he says, but if I live in the flesh, in the body, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what I shall choose, I what not. That, that is mind-blowing. Let me read it to, to you from a newer version. It says, for to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. Now, if I am to go on living in the body, this would mean productive work for me. Yet, I don't know which I prefer. How can a human being say, say I, I don't know which one I prefer? To die or to continue living? Is it in your hand? That's what I mean. Natural reasoning. Is it? How can, are you the one to decide? But the man is showing us here. He says, I, I don't know which one I prefer. If I, if I die straight, I, I join Jesus. He says, if I continue, I have to be productive. I have to do the work of God. 
I'm not sure which one I prefer. You know, years ago when I read this thing, I, 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 I thought whether I should pull my hair out of my head. I, am I seeing this? It's not over. Listen. Then it goes on to say, I feel torn between the two because I have a desire to depart and be with Christ which is far better but it is more vital for your sake you your sake that I remain in the body he's making a decision L look at it he says the way I really feel for me I I'd rather go but because of you if I remain in the body it's profitable for you then he says <laughs> King James says, for I am in a state betwixt two. Hmm. Now, and since I am sure of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for the sake. Did you hear that? For the sake of your progress and joy in the faith. He says, so for your sake, I will remain. He wasn't going to commit suicide. I don't mean he was going to kill himself. He wasn't going to kill himself. Here's a man that chose. Listen, he was arrested many times. And he could tell, no matter what they do, they can't kill me. He says, I'll, I'll be out for your sake. For your sake. When he finished, let's go. Second Timothy, I want you to see it. Now you can understand why always God tells us fear not fear not any little thing that happens <laughs> fear not listen Paul is writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4 are you there <laughs> say I refuse to fear, I refuse to fear. say it again I'll never be afraid in my life. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. He's telling Timothy. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Did you see that? Says, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You see that? When he was done, when he had done his job, He said, the time of my departure is at hand. He knew. So he had to set things in order. Remember when there was a king in the Bible called Hezekiah. And Hezekiah, you know, God sent a prophet to tell him that he was out of time. And he was going to die. So the prophet Isaiah went to him and said, thus saith the Lord God set your house in order for you shall die and not live he was sick already and the prophet came to tell him he was going to die so he gave him the message and walked away the bible says hezekiah turned his face to the wall he said for peace i had great bitterness but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption he said the dead cannot celebrate you the dying cannot hope for your truth they that go down to the pit cannot praise you he said only the living he says only the living can praise you as I do this day the father to the children shall make known thy truth for thou was ready to save me as he praised God like that he said the dying cannot praise you the dead cannot celebrate you he says well, what am I dying for now <laughs> you see that 
he said, but I want to make your praise, make your truth known to the children, the next generation. As he praised God like that and talked, the Bible says he turned to the wall and prayed. As he prayed that prayer, the Bible says God spoke to Isaiah the prophet and said, turn back, go and tell him, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, and I've added to your life 15 more years. God gave him 15 more years. He was supposed to die. So he knew he had 14 years and then another one year and then get prepared. Did you see that? God, hear me, God hates death. That is a language that you can catch. You know why I said that? Because that's the expression. The truth is, he has no recognition of it. It's an enemy. The Bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Death is an enemy. The Bible tells us Jesus wept at the grave of Lazarus. Why? Because an enemy had done this. And that was what he had in mind for us. And then he robbed death, or actually defeated death, and took the power out of it and paralyzed death. It has already been defeated and paralyzed. It is going to be destroyed. That means annihilated. Hallelujah. He's defeated death. The fear of death is taken out. Can you say hallelujah? hallelujah? That's a fact. I'm just trying to show you what he has done for us in Christ Jesus. That's what I'm trying to show you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.